the, in the context of, of innovation, it, it's it's straightforward to think of cities as basically the container or the location where innovation takes place. And we just we just look inside and take the container as, as given. But as the the talk by Professor Roddy suggests, and as many people have observed, the city is actually a part of the system. It isn't just a container. And it's a very revealing and interesting one to study. Uh, the, the point about the difference between the economics of ideas as opposed to objects is that ideas create gains from scale. With objects, if there are more people around, that actually is a net harm for us. Every object we have has to be shared amongst more people. But if we have more people who can discover new ideas and share them, more people are actually beneficial. And so far throughout history, the benefits from increased scale have significantly outweighed the, the harms. But what that means is that we've had to figure out as a species how to organize ourselves at larger and larger scales, at scales for which there was no precedent in our evolutionary history. And the city, as Ed Glazer has really demonstrated very clearly in his work, uh, and you should read his book if you, if you haven't, the city is, is the perfect illustration of the enormous benefits that started to emerge from larger scales, scales like 100,000 to a million to 10 million. But there were a number of problems associated with that kind of scale as well. Uh, problems of sanitation, of public health. And there was innovation, not just that happened inside the container, but that was actually redefining what the container was. Things like municipal water systems or systems of municipal policing, which were designed to deal with some of the harms associated with larger scale and to then let us continue to enjoy all, all the benefits. We're facing this issue now, not just at the city scale, but really at a, at a global scale. Pandemics are going to move around the world much more quickly because of the kind of global mobility that we, we now enjoy. And we have firms that have been able to establish market dominance at a scale which is now truly global, not just national. And we're struggling uh, with the challenges of what adjustments do we have to make to, uh, to get the benefits of global interaction, global scale of sharing of ideas, yet simultaneously to minimize the harms from pandemics and firms that risk becoming so large that they threaten the very foundations of our political and legal systems, that they really become beyond any, any system of, of governance. So the, there's a kind of a techno side of this techno urban paradigm, which is emerging, which is going to present very serious challenges to us. And I don't think existing antitrust law, I don't think existing regulatory systems is going to be up to the challenge of protecting us from firms that are so powerful that they stifle innovation, but even that they threaten our governance uh, systems. But we faced big challenges before. We faced them when we went into the cities. The history of cities should give us hope that somewhere around the world, people will organize themselves to address these larger problems. Other places may lag behind, but those places that do address the problems will get the benefits of global scale without the harms, and they'll succeed, they'll surge ahead, Others will eventually cap, catch up and progress will continue. Thanks.